Okay, so one of the things that you learn in basic algebra or first year algebra is how to simplify expressions like this. This is really important that you know how to do a problem of this type. And let's go ahead and take a look at the problem. What we have here is 4a minus 8 over 15a divided by 3a minus 6 over 5a squared. Okay, now I'll tell you what type of expression this is in just one second, but if you know how to simplify this particular algebraic expression, well, that is fantastic. Matter of fact, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'll show you the correct answer in just one second, then of course we'll walk through exactly how to do this basic algebra problem. This is uh, critical stuff, especially if you are in a math course that involves algebra. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help learning math, well, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so before I show you the answer, let's just go ahead and tell you what type of expression this is in algebra. We call this type of expression a rational expression. So really what we're doing here is dividing rational expressions, and rational expressions are effectively uh, fractions that consist of polynomials. But anytime you hear that word rational in math, you want to think of fractions, okay? Of course, there is something called rational numbers. Hopefully you know what those are. But uh, anyways, before I go off on too many tangents, let's go ahead and see the answer to this problem. And if you did this right, here is the correct answer, uh, 4a over 9. All right, so how did you do? Well, if you got this right, that is great. Matter of fact, I have to give you a nice little happy face and A plus 100% and multiple stars. So you can tell your friends and family that indeed you are a certified professional expert in the area of dividing rational uh, expressions. Now, most of your friends and family be like, I have no idea uh, what that is, but it sounds pretty cool. Enjoy that. I'm going to go back to my Netflix. But in all seriousness, great job. All right. Now, as the title of this video indicates, uh, basically, this is effectively, you know, basic algebra. And you kind of start learning this stuff in pre-algebra. And then like in a first year algebra course, like algebra one, or you know, the first time you see algebra, you start learning how to do problems like this. But actually, the secret to doing this problem goes way back to your primary or elementary school days when you were dealing with just regular fractions. So let's go ahead and start there. So if you're a bit confused, well, we have to kind of rewind the clock on your education and go back to dealing with regular fractions. All right, so effectively here we have a fraction. Again, of course, this is called a rational expression, but we're dividing it by another fraction. Now, we don't call these fractions because they have variables, or the numerator and denominators are polynomials. So what we're doing here is dividing rational expressions. Okay, Again, that word rational indicates, or just basically you want to be thinking about fractions. So when you're thinking about this problem, it's a great idea to review how you divide regular fractions. So here is a lovely problem for you. And if you can't do this problem, we're going to have a tough time with uh, this, you know, rational expression situation. So we have four fifteenths divided by two thirds. Okay. Now, how could you do this problem? Now, of course, you're not going to be using a calculator and a lot of you are going to get the right answer. But uh, I want you to kind of take it a step further. I want you to think about this in terms of, let's suppose you know what you're doing. You're like, yes, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I can do this problem. This is easy. But let's suppose there's a person over here who's very sad, and they're like, I have no idea, you know, what's going on here, how to do this. So how would you teach this, uh, you know, uh, problem, how to do this problem to someone else. Because if you can teach this, that's a great indication that you know this, and it's going to force you to think in terms of, okay, I got to tell them this, 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 and this, and this. Okay. All right. So, you know, kind of reflect on that a little bit before we actually review how to do this problem. So how do we do uh, division of fractions? Well, let's go and get into it right now. Okay. So we don't really divide fractions per se. 
What we're going to do is change that division problem into a multiplication problem. And the way we do that is that we flip the fraction to the right of the division sign. So we have 4 fifteenths divided by 2 thirds. So we're going to flip this upside down. That's called the reciprocal. So what we're going to do is uh, take 4 fifteenths and multiply it by 3 halves. This is equivalent to dividing these fractions right here. Okay, so we're going to take the division problem and rewrite it as a multiplication problem. Now, of course, we need to know uh, how to multiply fractions. All right, so 4 fifteenths divided by 3 halves. What do we do? Well, let's going to take a look at that right now. All right, now what we're going to do uh, in terms of multiplying uh, fractions is you simply multiply the respective numerators and denominators. Now, of course, I could just go, okay, 4 times 3 is 12 over 15 times 2 is 30. And if this is the answer you got, well, that's like pretty good. I might give you like a B plus, but if you want an A plus, you have to simplify. This is not like an optional thing in math, okay? So... You know, but like, yeah, I don't like to uh, simplify my answers, Mr. YouTube Math Man. I'm just going to get an answer that is generally correct. Well, no, no, you got to finish the problem. So your work is not done here. Now, some of you could take this problem and reduce it. But really, to simplify this uh, problem, the best way to do this is to do the following. Okay, so here we have 4 times 3. What we want to do is look for like factors between the numerator and denominator. And this is really going to be key to doing this uh a problem of dividing uh, rational expressions. So 4 is the same thing as 2 times 2. Now you'll see why uh, you know, I'm writing it in this manner. So 4 times 3 is the same thing as 2 times 2 times 3. 15 is the same thing as 3 times 5. So 15 times 2 is the same thing as 3 times 5 times 2. Now this is what most of you are doing in your brain, but you probably don't even realize uh, you know, you know, what you're doing and why you're doing it. That's why I wanted you to kind of think over here if you had to teach this material to make sure that this person really understood it, like, oh, I know the exact precise steps, you know, that I should be thinking about in order to do this problem. So to simplify uh, the uh, the fraction here, uh, the result of multiplying, okay, we went from division to multiplication to a problem. Now we want to reduce this problem or simplify it. So what we're going to be doing is looking for like factors, if there's any like factors, between the numerator and denominator. Now, we can't really um, assess if there are like uh, factors unless we factor everything. Okay, so 4 can be factored as 2 times 2, and 15 can be factored as 3 times 5. So you're like, oh, I have a 2 here, and I have a 2 here. So you can cross-cancel one like factor for one other like factor. So this 1, 2 can't uh, cross-cancel with these 2's, 2's. It's just 1 for 1. So that 2 can cross-cancel with that 2, and those are gone. And I'm like, hey, I have a 3 over here, and I have a 3 over here, so I can cross-cancel there. 1, 3 for 1, 3, and I'm left with what? 2 over 5. Okay, so I have a 2 remaining in the numerator and a 5 remaining in the denominator. This is how you simplify fractions. Now, of course, you could have been like, all right, let's see here, 12 uh, over 30. And then you could have been like, all right, let me see here, uh, uh, 6 goes into 12, 2, and then 6 goes into 35. There you go. There is my answer. And you're kind of doing the same thing, but the way I just kind of broke it out, uh, broke this problem down, okay, the steps is the steps that we are effectively going to be taking to simplify this rational uh, expression. Okay, of course, we have to do some division, but hopefully you're like, yes, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I am ready to graduate to the problem. Okay, so here it is. Now, if you didn't get this right, or if you didn't know how to do this problem, well, why don't you give this a shot? All right, now here is our situation. We have a fraction divided by another fraction. Of course, we call these rational expressions. Again, just, you know, we want to be, uh, you know, accurate with our terminology. So what we're going to do is take this division problem, and we're going to uh, write it as a multiplication problem by flipping this fraction to the right. Okay, it's no different than what we did with the numbers. So we're going to put the 5a squared as the numerator and a 3a minus 6 down here in the denominator. Okay, so at this point, what are we going to do? Well, you could multiply across, okay, because that's effectively what we're going to do. But we're going to have to be thinking about factoring, okay, just like this part of the problem right here, 4 times 3. 
we want to start thinking about the factor uh, factors or if we can factor these uh, various expressions. So that's where it's going to get nice and interesting in this problem. So let's go to take the next step, which of course is having you quickly subscribe to my YouTube channel. Don't you just like how I just squeeze that in? You're probably thinking, oh boy, this guy just can't wait to um, ask people to subscribe. He's probably thinking about this the entire time during this video. Well, actually I'm not. When I'm teaching, I get into the, uh, the subject, but when I do stop and I see my little subscribe reminder, well, that's very important for me, okay? Because my goal is to reach as many people as possible, and I can't do that without getting your support. So if you're getting some sort of value out of this material, well, just go ahead and hit that subscribe button, so easy, and hit that notification bell as well so you can get my latest videos. For 2024, that's when I'm posting this video, my goal is to make a 1,000 videos this year. Last year in uh, 2023, I made like around 307 uh, or 730 videos, excuse me. And I said to myself, you know what? I can do better. So, you know, we all need to have goals. And that's what my goal uh, is for 2024. And I'm going to try to do a little bit more advanced problems as well, because on my channel, you'll see a ton of videos that go from basic math to advanced math. Uh, but I do a lot of word problems, and I think I'm going to kick it up a bit and challenge you guys out there with some more advanced type word problems. I'll uh, certainly do the more basic word problems, but people seem to like those type of problems. Okay, so let's go and get back to the rest of the problem because we have some work to do. Okay, now we're going to be thinking in terms of uh, two fractions, and we're going to be thinking in terms of multiplying two fractions, which, of course, is we're going to multiply the respective numerators and denominators. But we don't want to just kind of do that right off the bat, okay? At this point in the problem, it's a good idea to start thinking about factoring, okay? Now, of course, I could take 5a squared and multiply it in to 4a minus uh, 8, okay, using the, uh, the distributor property. But it basically what I'm going to be doing is multiplying, and then I'm going to have to undo that multiplication because I want to fully factor the numerator and denominator because I am looking for like factors. Now, of course, you can see here, we already have some like factors. And if you don't know how to factor, well, I would consider that a math emergency, okay? Especially an algebra emergency. Uh, factoring is one of the most critical skills that uh, you need in algebra. And a lot of students have a tough time with it, but hopefully this is pretty easy for you. So we have 4a minus eight, so we can factor out a four. Now, one way you can know four would be the greatest common factor. One way that you know that you factored this correctly is that when you multiply it back in, you get back to the original thing. So four times a is four a, four times two is eight. Okay, so if we factor the numerator over here, that's gonna be four times a minus two. Now, typically, you know, if you're facing a problem like this on a test or homework quiz or something, uh, you're going to end up with like factors, right? I'm just gonna tell you as a math teacher, 99% of the time, if you're like, okay, four and a minus two, there's probably a good chance that you're gonna find an a minus two or a four or some sort of uh, you know, common factor uh, down in the denominator. And of course we do, so let's go over here. 3a minus six can be factored as three times a minus two, right? Of course, we could check that by multiplying that three back in to a and two, we get back to this thing. All right, so you can see here, we have some like factors. These uh, a minus twos are going to go away and we have some other common factors. We have five and 15. We know that five goes into 15 and a and a squared. So we have some nice opportunities to simplify this. So let's go ahead and just take it one step at a time. All right, now when we multiply the numerator and uh, the denominator, and let me just kind of erase all this mess here. Uh, and of course, you know, you can factor this. It's always better to factor before you actually, you know, um, uh, multiply things together, but don't actually do the multiplication. Just show this is multiplication. Uh, we have one rational expression here and another here. Notice there's two individual fraction bars. So you can just say, okay, we're gonna put this over one big fraction bar because this is the result of multiplying the respective numerators and denominators. Okay, so one step at a time, a minus two and a minus two, I could just uh, cross cancel these. And what am I left with? Okay, let me see, did I actually write the word? Yes, I did. Okay, so a minus two times a minus two. Now, if you want to try to finish the rest of the problem, okay, uh, we have a five here, a 15 here. So you might wanna think of 15 as what? Five times three. Here is uh, a, so that's times a. So this is five times a squared, which is a times a. 
Okay, so I'm kind of giving you some big hints. Don't forget about this four, so four times all of this. And then of course we have this three down here. So one of the things you have to be careful with when you're doing these problems that you don't forget these factors. That's why neatness is so important in just taking things one step at a time. Okay, so uh, clearly the A minus twos go away. And now we can uh, focus on the rest of the problem. Okay, so when A minus twos go away, we're left with four times five A squared uh, over 15 A times three. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, finish this problem up. Here is the answer. So this is the way you can approach this, okay? So here we have a three and here we have a four. Now this is, my eyes just kind of went from the three to the four. So you don't have to look at it this way, but I'm saying, all right, well, I don't see anything in the numerator that I can divide three into, so there's no common factor there. So this is going to stay put. How about four? Well, I don't see anything down in the denominator to cross cancel with this. So this is going to stay put. So now I'm going to focus in uh, my attention on the fives. Okay, so five can go into 15, three. Okay, or you can think of it as this. You have the five down here and the 15 is the same thing as five times three. So five cross cancels with five. You're left with a three right there. Okay, now uh, this three times three is going to be what? Well, that's going to give us our nine down here in the denominator. So we're left with an a squared here and an a. So a squared is the same thing as a times a, and then we have an a here, so one a can cross cancel with another a, leaving us with just one a in the numerator, and of course we can't forget about that four right there. So our final answer is four a over nine. Okay, now in terms of level of difficulty, this problem is uh, maybe like a three out of a 10, all right? So if we were talking about hot sauce or salsa, this would be like a mild, you know, a <laughs> salsa to kind of use that, uh, you know, example or analogy. So you might be like, oh my goodness, there's way more harder problems than this, Mr. YouTube Math Man. Indeed there are, but don't get discouraged, right? I think where most people have a tough time is one, you know, if you understand how to divide fractions, you understand the concepts that we went through, typically where people struggle with here uh, is the factoring part, okay? You gotta understand factoring. And if you need help with factoring, you gotta get full instruction and a lot of, uh, you know, go through a lot of different examples. So I would suggest that you check out like my Algebra One course, all right? You'll find a link to that in the description below. And if you're not uh, a student, you're not taking a particular math course, but this stuff interests you and you wanna learn this, well then check out my Math Skills Rebuilder course. I teach a lot of algebra, uh, also basic math and geometry and even some trigonometry and probability and statistics in that course. But uh, anyways, hopefully this little video helped you out. And if that's the case, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.